Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm sitting next to a beautiful little nine inch precision South Bend lathe model C. I recently acquired this. It was a gift to me from John Collings, and there are other videos in that regard. But the purpose of this video is to describe and differentiate to you the different models of nine inch South Bend lathes that were produced over the years. There were really quite a few, so there's some confusion as to what these different models are. So I'm going to explain that all, I hope, in this video. This Model C South Bend 9-inch lathe is really the base model. It's the shortest one and it has the least amount of extra equipment on it. Now all of the 9-inch lathes were available in four different bed lengths and this is the shortest. It is three foot overall and they also made these in three other sizes three and a half foot four and four and a half foot some of these were sold uh, not only as bench models but as cabinet models or models that had legs on it also they were available in uh, different numbers of speeds and, and uh, some were built a flat belt drive and there was at least one that is a v-belt drive and i'm going to explain a lot of that to you by way of an older south bend catalog now this machine was made in 1952 so it's got a few years on it but it is in particularly good condition. Again, it's a bench mounted lathe with the motor and drive behind. Some of the cabinet models had the motor underneath, which was called an underdrive. I will show in the description box several videos that I have. Click on those links if you want in regards to other South Bend machines that I have owned, including two Model A South Bends. The difference between the three different models, A, B, and C, is really twofold mainly. One is the carriage and apron, and the other is does it or does it not have a quick change gearbox. Now the Model C does not have a quick change gearbox. It has a box of change gears like this, and you're all familiar with those. I don't know how many is in here, but in order to change the number of threads per inch that you might be threading or the feeds, you have to switch gears, which can be very laborious and time consuming. It is almost always a big advantage to have a quick change gearbox, but it was not available on the Model C. Furthermore, the Model C has the simplified apron here and it has a half nut lever that will be used for both threading and feeding. There is no power cross feed, so it's greatly simplified. And I do have a video where I take a Model A carriage apart and show all the internal workings. Again, that will be shown in the description box. There'll be a link for that if you want to watch that. Looking at the machine from the end, there is a brass tag here, and that is also shown in the book, How to Run a Lathe by South Bend. And I will be making a video showing how to change the gears, but there are the gears looking at them from the end, and here are the change gears that can be switched around according to that chart that I just showed you. I know that was a little bit hard to read. This takes a lot of time to do. Now this machine, as you can see, is equipped with a very modern motor and a variable frequency drive. So I have uh, infinitely variable speed that was not used at all. It was not even invented yet uh, years ago. But this machine has a total of 12 speeds. We got back gears and we got three speeds on the flat belt and we have two belt positions here on this pulley and down here. So that again, doubles the speed. So we have a total of 12 speeds. If you wanna to go to the effort 
of changing the speed, but it'll be so easy with the variable frequency drive in comparison. Again, this is called the back drive. Notice that these older machines were never equipped with a belt guard here, and I think I did a video a long time ago on how to make a guard for that. I'm not going to do that again, but you can look that up if you want to see that. But there are some models shown in the catalog that have only a single pulley here. It does not have two steps, and it would have a single groove on the motor pulley as well. So that must have been a slightly cheaper model. Well, that's about as much as I can show you here before I go to catalog pictures, since I do not actually own a Model A or a B anymore, but you know all about the C, so let's take it from here with some very good archival black and white photos that I think you will enjoy as well. And I will put plenty of stills at the end, including specifications, etc. This is the 1952 South Bend Lathe Catalog. And believe it or not, this machine was purchased, I said before, in 1952, so this might very well have been the catalog that this machine was ordered from. So I found that to be somewhat interesting, but now let's take a look at all of the other models uh, in these uh, beautiful black and white photos. Here are the specifications for the Model A 9-inch. On this catalog page, although it says Model A right here, they are actually telling a bunch of features here that are on all of the models. And then down in the lower right hand corner, and I have a still of this that I'll show near the end, here are the specifications for the Model A. And then in these two paragraphs, it tells the differences between the B and the C, and I guess the A. This, of course, is the Model C, which I own, and I have just shown you. And below on the page here are all of the specifications, and I'm not going to show you all that information on all the different models, but it does go into great detail. Okay, this is the first chance you have had to see the Model B, and I never have seen one of these in the flesh. But as you can see there, it says Model B, horizontal motor drive, back geared, powered cross feed. So you can see that this has the deluxe apron on it, with the worm gear and the power cross feed. However, it does not have a quick change gearbox, so it's really the medium model. And finally here is Model A, which I've talked about. And they list it here as a horizontal motor drive, back geared, quick change. Notice that it has the deluxe apron and a quick change gearbox. And this is a 12-speed lathe. Same as the other two that I have just shown you. So. The A, B, and C could be called good, better, and best if it was sold at Sears Roebuck in the 50s, which it wasn't. As you can readily see here, these are all called bench lathes, so you have to either make or beg, borrow, or steal a bench, or put it on an existing bench, but South Bend also did provide benches at extra cost, and I'll see if I can find pictures to show you. Okay, here's a bench that you could buy from them. I do not know the price, but it's called a tubular steel bench, and it has six drawers. Notice that it has no provision for a motor underneath, so this is for bench-style lathes. But if you're on a budget, you could buy the so-called angle steel bench with wood top, and it says it was hardwood, and it has a drawer, so that would be a pretty good solution as well. Notice the cast iron legs. I 
I spent a lot of hours on this machine. If you had real deep pockets, you could buy the 9 inch tool room precision bench lathe. And it's got all the bells and whistles, but I'm sure that it costs plenty. But you can see here the differences between this and let's say the Model A that it has a collet attachment, there's the drawbar and a set of collets, maybe they were extra, I'm not sure. And it also has a taper attachment, a plain taper attachment. Perhaps now you can see why this is somewhat confusing because here's yet another model of the 9 inch. However, this is a 6 speed and it's available in the models A, B, and C. And by 6 speeds, what I told you out in the garage shop a few minutes ago, it has just a single pulley back here rather than that double pulley that comes from the motor. But it has the same back gears and the same flat belt system. That must have been a slightly cheaper model. I do not have the price list for 1952. And here's yet another model that I mentioned briefly. This has V-belts right here rather than flat belts and it is available as an 8 or a 16 speed in models A, B, or C. So what they're saying there is you were able to buy it with this pulley or the single pulley. Here's a model I haven't talked about yet. It's a 9 inch tool room precision floor lathe so it's on a cabinet with the motor underneath so they call that the underdrive but being the tool room lathe it also has the collet attachment and the taper attachment. That would be a very nice model to have. And finally and lastly, here is another model, it's the 9 inch precision floor lathe, available in a model A, B, or C, with the motor underneath, belt drive. Now, I did own one exactly like this, and I'll put the link in the description if you want to look th at that. I no longer have it. It was a little bit worn out, and that is the reason that I sold it. You might find it interesting to note that these machines were marketed toward homeowners and small shops very much. So this is a pull-out insert from a popular mechanics magazine oh, in the early 50s. So it's actually a catalog showing the different machines. I'm not going to go through all of this. And the different attachments. All aimed at the man in his basement. Here's an ad from the 1952 Popular Mechanics magazine. This page is from the 1939 Popular Science and there they're advertising the 9 inch lathe for six dollars a month or $117 direct from the factory. There wasn't any other financing. You paid the factory, which is kind of unusual. But those prices translate to $2,328 in this year's money. Fast forward to 1954 and here's the same machine for $211 equivalent to $2,170 right now. And I have to get a laugh out of this that they are making fun of the Scottish people as being cheap. You certainly couldn't get away with that now. It wouldn't be PC. This is a 1938 ad and it's only $85 if you supply your own motor. 117 with the motor. But remember during that year all through the 30s the Great Depression was raging and very few people would have been able to afford $85. Even the $6 a month in that other ad was way too much. 
Well, fast forward to 1948, and there is the Model A for $344. Of course, you're getting the quick change gearbox and the deluxe carriage apron. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.